I just realized. This Man of Steel armor protects neither the back of my head nor my ass. Some might view that as a design flaw. Hello everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. Today we are in for exciting times because I have myself a lovely collection of seared bricks from melting down stone in our crucible furnace. And I am going to make a bunch of Tinker's smeltery parts. I have us a tank, a controller, and there is actually a quest here that's asking me for specific amounts of things. It just wants one drain, some bricks, a casting table. Okay, that's all easy. A casting table. Let me just get the four bricks to complete the quest. And I believe it's actually asking for a tool forge. That may have to wait a little bit. And it wants a drain. I will in fact make two drains. And I will make myself a casting basin. I'm still kind of used to Project Ozone, where you cannot actually make metal blocks. You have to cast it in the smeltery. And actually, while I'm here, let me go down and get one of my patterns and make a pattern chest to hold all of our casts. Yes. <sighs> so, I actually still feel a little bit tired from doing that montage last episode, even though it's been some time. Ah yes, between episodes, I made myself a Bagginses bag. This one is just holding some of the basic tools I only use occasionally. My Wand of the Forest, the Clippers, my Bookbinder, and so on. So, let us go and find a place to put this smeltery. I'm thinking right over here, nearish to the Mariculture area. We'll make this kind of the tech corner of the base. Yeah, I have enough blocks to go for a full 3x3. Three three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Smeltery, smeltery. Hmm, I think I can actually make this too tall. Let's put the tank over here. Train. Train. And a bunch of blocks. Hmm. Damn. Ah! That's better. Hubris be damned. It's not too big. It's not big enough. Also, I have got a tool forge. And I moved the tool stations and such over here. So I now have an entire little compact tinkers area. I also swapped around the stencil table and part builder so I can have the chest sitting there underground out of the way. So for that I get quite a lot of mechanist rep and I get some casts. Excellent. Now the smeltery can be used for ore doubling but that's not too terribly important when we have magical crops. The big thing that is important is we can use it to make ourselves alloys and we can use it to upgrade our tools. I believe that bronze, let's see. Where does it say? Yeah, 
Bronze is the mining level that we currently have, so we have to do better than that. I think Alumite would be our upgrade. Yeah, mining level Alumite. And with that, we will be able to go to the Nether and do quite a lot of mining for this thievery quest. This looks like it's just Nether Copper, but this is only the first step. We're going to have to get Nether Iron and a bunch of other Nether Ores and basically work our way up. So that will be quite an adventure. In case you were wondering, the even ratio for Alumite is... Obsidian, iron, and aluminum at 2, 2, 5. If you have a one high 3x3 three three smeltery, it should fill it up perfectly. Well, not with a liquid, but, you know, with, with this. Alumite Pickaxe, the Pink Terror. Aluminum Brass to make more casts for tools. Aluminum and copper at three to one. Okay, all of our tools have been pinkified, including one of the spare set of knives from the nether side. You notice that by upgrading to Alumite, and I upgraded both the blade and the tool handle because it has a higher handle modifier, we get vastly more knives. And this is even more useful than you might think, because the regen rate of a tool is partially based on its durability. So, the first ore that we need to find is nether copper. And nether copper is unfortunately kind of hard to spot. It is a very subtle color. Hmm. Also, I don't think I want to start mining too near to the portal, because the moment I start mining nether ore, all the pigmen are going to chimp out. There's another iron. Ah, yes, notice, notice also that throughout the nether I have pillars. And those work in here as well. You just need to make them slightly more often. Good old navigation pillars. Reliable everywhere. So what I'm looking for is well, a kind of mottled pattern. That looks like it might be it. That's amber. Amber is going to be useful, though, because when it gets to making amber and quicksilver essence for Thomcraft, we will actually need to source it from here. Yes, we're to the point where we can't just get essences from quests. Some of the essences, we need things that we mine up from the nether. Jesus, where is all of the copper? At this point, I'm mostly recording because there's the potential for shenanigans. Finally! I've been trying to do that forever. Yeah, it always feels badass to do that. Didn't get the return to sender for it. Well, I don't think I have that achievement unlocked anyway. Who cares about Minecraft achievements? We're on to questing achievements. Totally better. At this point, I think I need to just start lighting up the nether just so I can goddamn see. 
I really need to get myself a source of night vision. I'm not sure if there's any unlocked at this point. Hmm. I guess I could make potions of night vision. Maybe that's worth a try. Actually, I can do it even better than the vanilla style. This is a botanical brewery. If you've, if you've never used Botania before, this can make you multi-use potions. With this little mana glass file, it's, use, it's worth three uses. And all it takes to make night vision is a spider eye, a golden carrot, which is a carrot surrounded by gold nuggets, and a nether wart. And some mana. Not too terribly much mana, I think. But... Yep. Less than the time it takes me to bring out my wand of the forest. And this will give me four shots of owl sight. Which is night vision that lasts for eight minutes. And this should vastly help with the nether journey. And actually, I believe that also that was a quest in the way the world works. Uh, but it wanted me to make a vial of vigor, which I believe is damage resistance? I don't know. I'll make that later. Time's a-wasting on this beautiful, bright red night vision. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, let's put my magical food on the bar, because that's my regen. Huh. <sighs> this is much better, though. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah. And the really cool thing is, later on, when I open the portal to Alfheim, which is kind of the second tier of Batania... I can get Elf Glass, which will give me potions with even more uses for the same amount of ingredients. Okay, I'm not spotting any copper that I missed just because my vision was so dim. I have been kind of tempted just to turn the brightness up from Moody, just for the sake of YouTube. But to me, that kind of feels like cheating on my part. Because, you know, the lighting being dim is kind of supposed to be part of the challenge of the reason why you put down torches and stuff, right? Okay, let's get up this hill here. Oh dear, that's a large heat scar spider. Two crit. Three crit. Four. Yeah, those are those are tough mofos. And they spit out babbies. Mm. Conglomeration of pigmen. I wonder. Has the Minecraft community decided if there is a proper plural noun of all the mobs? Hmm. A demolition of creepers. A xylophone of skeletons. No, no, no. Mm. A... An anatomy of skeletons. On the right track. A spook of skeletons. Very mimetic. Hmm. A doot of skeletons? Even more mimetic, but also kind of lame. All these hellhounds that I've been killing are from witchery. And these tongues of dog and occasional dog skulls they drop. 
I believe they're both involved in something that allows me to deal with demons. But don't qu- No, finally! Finally! <laughs> mm. But yeah, don't quote me on that, because I've never played much of Witchery. That's part of the reason why I want to get into Regrowth, to give me an excuse to learn it. Because it is a very lovely looking mod. So, I've angered a whole bunch of piggies, but I don't think any of them can actually see me. And there aren't too many around in the first place, so I'm in a pretty good position here. So let's check our quest, what the world enables. Okay, so the first one really was just copper. Now we have Reclamation, which wants nether iron and nether coal. Now I've seen nether iron all over the place. And nether coal is, thankfully, pretty easy to spot. Might be in trouble here. Okay, not really in trouble. Oops. Magical food for the win. So did it only want one? Yeah, it only wanted one. Okay. And of course now we have the chain reaction where killing an angry pigman angers more pigmen until everyone is dead. Just like the DMV. That was a really bad Monday. Yeah, I think I'm just going to have to kill this entire group. It's not an elegant solution, but it solves a lot of problems. Oh man, that's a lot. Okay, get some distance. Sprint away. Just keep on kiting them and keep on regening. Maybe if I run them in circles enough, I can. Okay. The hellhounds are not helping. I might be in trouble here. Sorry about the noise, that's just the heater turning on, and we're going to have to kind of deal with it, because I have to do a corpse run. And it is night. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip together some just disposable armor... Maybe a quick weapon, like a sword. Yeah, I'm just gonna make some iron armor. I am dumb. Hmm. Doesn't really work, does it? Ah oh, yes, and I have the spare throwing knives in the chest over on that side, so 
I'll have at least something to use while I sprint for my corpse. Okay, so... Hey, can one-shot ghasts now. So, our grave should be over this way. Beyond the nether fortress. And I'm going to have to watch out for when the piggies start getting angry again. They might have calmed down. Are we cool? Because I think those were the dogs that got me. This area looks kind of familiar. It's near to the Nether Fortress. All these fires everywhere. Frickin' Frickin' Thomcraft bats, I swear. Hmm. Fortunately, I didn't have anything terribly valuable on me in case this is a lost cause. Oh, thank Christ. Okay, I'm, I'm probably going to cut in here because that was like 15 minutes of just wandering around. But yeah, all the piggies despawned, so I'm... It, it was cool. We, we have no problems. Okay, out with the crap, in with the slightly less crap. Get everything just like how I like it again. And I'm thinking, just right back to the grind. And I can just toss that iron armor into a fire somewhere. Gravestone, not going to use that for decoration. <sighs> and trust me, it was hellacious navigating the nether without this night vision. I think that is going to become part of the standard paranoid nether journey pack from now on. Ugh. So many piggies. Yeah, not, not gonna mess with a big group of them again. Especially not if there's a hellhound around. Hellhound around, hellhound around, hellhound around. Fun to say, fun to say. Now the problem is I might be mildly lost. This, ah, there's, there's a guidance pillar. <laughs> I'm not lost. And I think here's some of the XP I dropped. I see ya.
Mm, oh dear. You stay back. Come on. Shoot. Hitting numbers by accident is bad. <laughs> Can't believe I missed it point blank range. Guess that shows what panicking does. Okay, so let's work our way back. Get out of range of all of these pigmen. And hellhounds are just becoming a nuisance. Okay, this is slightly less crowded. Now let's see if I can find some... That looks like nether iron over there. Easy. Peasy. Okay, and now it wants nether tin. I saw some just a little ways back. Nether tin is very easy to spot. Shoot. It's very easy to spot when you don't derp yourself off of a cliff. Fortunately, I can just pillar up. Can you imagine pillaring up in real life? Just like jumping into the air and slapping a piece of dirt under your feet so you're standing on a little hill when you come down. It might be possible, but you'd need to be like a parkour expert. Okay, another tin. And here we are. It wants salt and amber. Well, we've seen amber around, and salt is only hard to distinguish because of how much it looks like nether quartz. It is fairly common, though. I think this might be it. That's salt, Peter. Damn. Hmm. Yeah, that's another salt ore. Salt and saltpeter. Two things in the same pack. That is a very useless statement. Okay, tiny pigmen, but we're cool. Even though I broke stuff nearby. Yeah, there's some amber right there. Let me see if I can despawn those pigmen. Reroll the encounter table. That looks like a good enough distance. There's some hellhounds. They are becoming my sitcom nemesis. Like, once per episode, they're going to barge in on me while I'm in the middle of an important conversation, and, and the audience will, like, sarcastically clap. That's, that's what happens in sitcoms, right? I haven't watched a sitcom in, like, ten years. Shoot. That's another thing. Nether ores are a bit unstable. Did I actually get amber, though? Yes, I did. Okay, now all I need is the salt. One eternity later.
<laughs> oh my god, I almost I almost missed it. <laughs> oh my god. It it has been it has been let's see. It's eight minutes per shot. These things have four shots. Let's see, I, I still had I think two in the vial after the corpse run and I spent those and I I went back and I made two potions because I knew I would and and now it's oh my god it has been like an hour and a half uh, oh my god and I almost was like derp 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 get in my belly and and not a single pig around. This is heavenly. This is heaven. Yes. It's is oh it's okay yeah. Goldor okay yeah I've seen and Saltpeter okay I already got that okay. Okay I've seen I've seen Goldor all over the place okay yeah. Oh Jesus Christ. Yep yep gold just right there gold. On the way back, even. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and this stuff I am going to need a better tool for, I think, because it says Thaumium Harvest. So I was wrong. Alumite is not even good enough to do this. And... Uh, <laughs> oh, never again, never again, never, never, never. Never, never again, never again, never again. Colors exist. Colors other than red exist. Oh my god. Okay, let, let's let's do something that's not nether. Let's let's make a coke oven. Coke oven is just. 27 of these coke bricks. It's just a bunch of seared bricks and some sand. Sand's easy. Seared bricks. I think I'm going to gear this thing up for mass production because I think it's faster to make seared bricks in this thing. See you in a moment when I figure out what system I want to use. While I was working on things, I kind of got caught out here at the night time, and I thought I'd show you the cool, glowy floor. Yes. It's not perfectly even because I didn't really space it out or anything. I was just using the F7 mode. And eventually, I'm hoping that I'll have vast swaths of land covered in systems like this. And maybe, maybe I'll put up a wall, or maybe I'll just extend it so far that I don't have to worry about monsters. And I can work 24-7. Isn't that a lovely dream? Well, like all good solutions, it required more resources than the problem it would solve. This pack doesn't have the redstone clock that I usually like to use just to pump stuff out of the smeltery into a casting table with a hopper. So instead, I thought I would try something from Baseline Tinker's Construct that I've never tried before. These casting channels. What these will do is they will accept a pour from a tap and spread it out to multiple tables. And here I have enough that... Despite loading up the smeltery with tons and tons of cobble, it should be able to cast out faster than it pours. So let's give this a try. Give it a pour. You see it's going up there, and it all ends up in this box when it's done. It's spreading to the various tables. Yeah. There we go. See, we already have more than six in, so it is cycling it is casting out faster than it is pouring. And because of that, the tap will just keep on pouring out until the entire thing is drained. Now, these casting channels do not spread evenly. Even if I measure out the amount of cobble I melt 
to perfectly match six tables, I will probably end up with one or two tables with a couple of millibuckets of seared stone left. So it's not really something I could use just for mass smelting purposes. It's only something I can use just to make massive amounts of seared stone. But hey, I tried something new. It ended up being kind of fun. And it's always nice to have a really big smeltery anyway. Ah, the coke oven. Nature's little helper. I was still thinking in terms of Project Ozone 2 instead of Railcraft, so I built myself one too many blocks. Because the Railcraft Coke Oven is hollow! Oh well, I'm probably going to have to build more than one of these anyway. But yes, if you've never used a Coke Oven before, it is a very simple process. You simply put coal into it, and you wait. And you wait for quite a while. And this will eventually produce coal coke, which burns for twice as long as regular coal, and it produces creosote oil. And if this tank gets full, it cannot actually burn any more coal. So you eventually have to deal with the creosote oil. Creosote oil has a couple of uses. First of all, I believe it can be burned as a fuel. It can be used to make torches, a couple of tiles, wood blocks, which... Yeah, it's, it's not really all that useful, I guess. Ah, here it is, the carpenter. Does all... Ah, here is the main use that we want it for. It makes these garden stuff bloomery furnaces. And these are going to be our first step down the path to making steel. Very important. And I think we can actually make a carpenter right now. Let's see, it needs these sturdy casings which need a rolling machine. What does a rolling machine need? That needs these sheets of aluminum and everything else I've already been I've already built before. And that is going to require a blacksmith's anvil, which is actually our next quest while the coke is cooking. We need to make a blacksmith's anvil and hammer. Those are relatively simple building jobs. They just take a little bit of a while to get all the materials together because it requires yet... Well, I have tons of burnt bricks. I bet I can manage it. Okay, let's see here. Anvil. That's blacksmith's anvil, yes. Okay, so that's going to require three construction blocks. So that's 12, 15 burnt bricks. And the hammer. Is going to require three more and some nether bricks. Okay. Now, let's see here. Gonna need 12 nether bricks to make those nether blocks. And I am going to need... Let's make two things of those. So... Hey, yep. So, we're going to need one, two, three of those, I think. Yeah, that's it for that. And then we're going to need... Oh, excuse me, I need to make the nether bricks first. 
So it goes like this for the anvil. And it goes like this for the hammer. Time to mine. The hammer counts as a pickaxe. Fascinating. So, that's the quest. We get tons of nether bricks and a blacksmith's assistant. The blacksmith's assistant in this pack is a little bit of an odd duck. These things require a tank beneath them, just like the crucible furnace, that's full of liquid XP. Now, normally, you can get that liquid XP from something like open blocks, where you have a, an XP grate, you stand on top of that, it drains it out of you and into the tank. Or you can have a, uh, a thermal expansion sewer that sucks up XP orbs. Or you could... I think it's compatible with Mob Essence, so I think you could have an MFR Mine Factory Reloaded Grinder. But we have none of those machines. And in fact, yeah, the only liquid... Yeah, the only green liquid is liquefied emerald. What we have in this pack is Molten X Perience, which we can only get by melting down these uh, creep these essence berries, which I haven't found any bushes for. I have been digging around underground, which is where you can find them. They are the one thing you find underground in this pack. And they are a secret quest in the first chapter. That is why our first chapter is not yet complete. Or you can get it from these experience drops that you can farm the experience plants for. And they actually give more XP anyway, and they're more easily farmable because essence berries take freaking forever. So that is probably how you would do it. And you could melt that down in the smeltery, or you could melt that down in a crucible furnace. So, if we wanted... Oh, and, and what the blacks... What the blacksmith's assistant does is, I think I can show you without having a tank, it accepts the hammer, and so long as there's XP and it drinks a little bit each time, it will just kind of wonk the hammer down and automatically forge things. You can have up to four of these facing inwards into an anvil at a time, and you can automatically hammer stuff out fairly quickly. Of course, there's not too many things you need to hammer in this pack, but that is a very useful tip if you're playing something like Blast Off, where the Mariculture anvils are used a lot. Anyway, let's check out our next quest. It is, in fact, to make that rolling machine. Excellent timing. So, let's put this down in our machine area, which most of the machines haven't actually been fully in. They're just kind of big processing machines that I've had off to the side. Well, I was thinking this area would be more for assembly. And let's put this blacksmith's assistant away, because it's going to require infrastructure to make. And I don't think I'm going to be using that kind of thing until I'm getting into mass automation anyway, which I might never do for the, for the anvil. So to make that rolling machine, I am going to need some smelted aluminium, which I do not have. I will be back in a minute. Here is how to use the anvil. You put your thing on there, you take your hammer, and you left click. And you cannot just hold down left click. If you hold down left click, it will attempt to break the anvil. Instead, you have to mash it. Oh yeah. Mm. That's good action. And that is how blacksmithing happens. Thankfully, almost every recipe that uses the blacksmith's anvil can be done in a rolling machine. And that is why we don't really need to automate the anvil. Okay, here we are, all the pieces assembled. We have a rolling machine. 
Unfortunately, that's not the end of the quest, because the rolling machine is our very first machine to require power. And the quest actually takes that into account. Because it wants us to build a hobbyist steam engine. Now, this I don't think is too hard to make. It's just some gold nuggets, a piston, and these gold-plated gears, which are these tin gear bushings, which are just four pieces of tin. So I'll be right back with all those pieces assembled. All right, here we are with the nuggets, the piston, the piece of glass, and these gears to give us a hobbyist steam engine. This thing, as you can see, produces a very tiny amount of RF. And I do believe it actually requires a lever to work, as well as fuel and water. Ah, wrong chest. Yeah, so let me grab a little bit of water. And I'll probably move a source over there, because... It would be a pain to keep... Yeah, it accepts that water, it accepts up to four buckets. And I have some coke finished in here, which should also solve that coke oven quest. There it goes. So now it wants me to make these iron plates neat. Yeah, if I just put the coal in there, you see it doesn't start burning. It needs to have a signal. And like all engines, it requires some time to heat up. In this case, actually, it requires... Before it even starts working, it requires 100 degrees Celsius. You can see up in Wayla there. That is at 80 right now, and I can look in here as well. Yes, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, I do believe. That is, in fact, how the Celsius scale works. I'll just grab this some more water. I don't think it uses it terribly quickly. Mm -hmm. In fact, I might just build it a tank. And that should keep it sorted for quite a while. One piece of that one. Four of those. I believe the tank goes like this. You start with that glass pane, and then you surround it with copper. Yes. Just fill these up real quick. I cannot build pumps yet. It will require redstone. But once I do, I could run hundreds of those steam engines just off one. Well, not hundreds, but you get the idea. <laughs> water bucket, water bucket. It will bring you lots of luck. It. Water bucket, water bucket. It rhymes with naughty words. There we go. Water's nice and full. It's slowly filling up the RF in the rolling machine. And as you see, it doesn't produce RF constantly right now because it is still heating up. Once it reaches full temperature and pressure, it should produce RF more constantly. And that's kind of how its RF rate works. What am I doing? I need iron. The rolling machine is a wonderful little machine that makes you tons of useful things. But most prominently right now, it makes us these plates. And the way the rolling machine works is, if you put one set in here, it just lays out the recipe, and it'll always try and keep that one set. If you pipe in more iron, it'll stack up into these four things, and it will just auto-craft them until you get down to one. 
but you can also just order it to manually craft and it will use those up and it will destroy the pattern. But yes, the rolling machine is automatable that way. Yep. And you saw it just picked up a little bit of steam. Well, <laughs> it picked up a little bit of speed. And now it's producing a slow trickle constantly with bigger bursts. Eventually when it reaches full speed, it'll be that bigger burst just constantly. And it's very noisy. I'm going to have to put my power gen a little ways away if I don't want to have to deal with that noise constantly. We get lots of mechanist points for that. Ah, yes. Next up we'll have these big tanks that can store hundreds and hundreds of buckets, and we have the uh, our first large-scale power production that can just produce tons and tons of the steam in here, and we can build specialist engines to suck it up. But, to use all that, I'm going to need pipes to move all the power around. And to make that, I am going to need redstone. Which I need redstone essence. And for that, I am going to have to get into the basics of witchery. So, next time on Regrowth... The quest for redstone. Joy.